Ismail what? wants to hear more about the struggle to build an audience. Um, uh, I'll get into that in just one second. Um, like there's, you know, there's fucking, you know, we're all stuck in the moment that we're stuck in, in life, right? So like you've learned what you've learned up until this point in your life. And I've learned what I've learned up until this point in my life. And I look back at the things that I didn't learn, that I didn't know, that I know now that I didn't know back then. And I'm like, fuck, look at me unknowing of this thing that I know now, you know? Um, And I think that that's like kind of where we all end up in life, you know, like at some point or another. So like, I don't try to down people too much for like being at a point where I was at once myself in a state of ignorance or something like that, you know? Um, or like, uh, or in a state of like, maybe not wanting to, you know, realize something or be a certain way or, you know, like there's no, there is no, there is no exact way of anything is what I'm really trying to say. So no, like, you definitely are, wasn't you trying are, to imply that. You, you weren't implying that anybody should live right or wrong, but we are allowed to philosophize on maybe what we believe the, the smarter or wiser ways to live are. That's it's a fair thing to do in the world because it's solutioning rather than complaining, right? You can say, yeah, yeah, definitely. Put in this kind of energy. I'm all about world. solutions. I'm I'm a big I'm a big proponent of um like I don't cry I don't like crying over spilled milk. It does me no good at all. Like milk is spilled. I'm not gonna sit here and cry about it. I'm gonna go get a fucking mop. I'm gonna mop it up. I'm gonna go to the store. I'm gonna buy some more milk. If that was the last bit of milk like solution i'm always focused on getting past the problem and getting towards like a a a, a solution the ha- the like i have a saying where like i go like oh the glass isn't half full or half empty i'm just happy that somebody was considerate enough to like leave some water for me to drink fair enough that is definitely a twist on that saying <laughs> Um, so yeah, what about more on the struggle on um, building an audience? I mean, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. It's not easy, you know? Like, we all kind of want to have that access to millions of people. And now we kind of do, but it's, like, super hard to still access them, you know? Like, it's just as hard, if not more, like, difficult than it used to be. Um, uh, and, you know, we all want to access. Like, I don't want... I, all I would... Like the thing that I desire the most out of like um, like my art and shit like that is like the desire to like have the um I think we've talked I've mentioned this before and I never um can remember the name of it and I never think oh, to look it up actually after I mention it to you. But like those rooms where like uh a company is behind a double, you know, uh, uh, behind a uh double sided mirror or one way mirror or something like that, right? And then they're looking at like 20 or 30 people in a row who are being like, 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 uh, asked about this product or something like that. And, you know, just to see their honest opinions about the product, like that's all that I've ever desired, but like on a major base, like on a, uh, on a huge level, you know, like I want my shit to play on like radio so that like, I can see like people's reaction. Like, you know, I want, I want to, you know, I just want to have the same opportunity that other artists want to have, which is to like maybe have a lot of people listen and see if they're into it or not, you know? I really like what you said about that just on the sense that um, I'm starting to realize like, like like there's this thing where there's this scope is not the, the, the what am I trying to say? The way people like look at the world and audiences and the scope of how many people are actually out there is kind of limited. And the only way to really have any sense of how good or bad your music even would be, honestly, at any point in your yeah. career, would be to have like a significant amount of people to hear it, right? Like you could have been like really good the whole time. I'm not saying you're not or whatever, but you as in anyone, like amazing. And just literally because nobody heard it, you didn't even know. So I like the yeah. fact that it's almost like you just want like the business intelligence to know how to optimize your art better. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all it really was ever for me. I mean, I've always looked at, like, I understand the industry. I worked in the music industry, so it's different. Like, I understand the meeting in the middle of art and business. And I understand the business of art 
from the music industry standpoint. So like where most artists would like get on a label and they're like, most artists are like, oh, I don't want to sell out. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm the type of artist that I'm like, nah, I want to do that. I like it. Call it whatever you want to call it, right? Like if it's selling out because I'm doing a song with um, fucking uh, a major artist at the time, like if it's a major artist that's like, I enjoy their music too, why wouldn't I? Like, what? That seems silly. Like, why would I not work with an artist because they're successful, you know? Oh, I, I, I shouldn't, you know, um, team up with, like, you know, uh, back then there were so many uh, artists that did do it, like Mr. T and M MC Hammer, and they got criticized. Well, not Mr. T, like MC Hammer did. Um, but it's like, yo, all that shit was really smart. And it was exactly the shit that artists are, like, are giving props for nowadays, which is, like, doing really smart marketing and, like, you know, doing, you know, like, it's like, Back then, you only had with so many things to do that smart marketing with. So, like, you know, hammer pants were smart. You know, like, what the fuck? Like, why wouldn't you do hammer pants? Like, that is smart. Like, what is selling out about that? That's like you're actually just doing good business artistically. Um, so, like, I understand, like, fucking being an artist that, like, actually wants to, like, be on a label and acquiesce the label and understand the business and understands the business of the label and um and selling records and so like yeah for me i've always kind of wanted to fucking do that like uh whole you know fucking big big you know big audience to see what it is that they do like what they don't like so that we could stick with the things that they do like and throw away the things that they don't like and unless they're like something i'm really passionate about in which case I'll still stuff it in here and there, you know, because, like, you can still do that as an artist. Like, you don't. there's ways to be an artist and please the label and please yourself. It's just most artists don't want to <clears throat> need in the middle. Hmm. Ismail saying, to me, selling out is when you were completely against the style of music and then you start doing it for fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that would that would definitely if you're against it yeah if you're against the style of music and you start doing it for fame yeah that's that's absolutely selling out yeah, yeah i would never that. do that i would argue yeah, though every artist does have the right to change their mind about music i used to be really against drake even straight up anti-drake and then i started reviewing drake um and now i really like him so now I want to flex with this different stuff. Like now I want to make dance auto tune stuff. I used to hate on it, but it's not because I want to get famous. I mean, that's a separate just conversation. Enjoy. It's more like I really listen to this shit. Like I put on that Twilight yeah, yeah. Three song by Uzi Vert all the time because it's just such a clever use of like his voice yeah. and shit. And like I just got into it as a genre. Mm -hmm.